Oh, well, it's time to learn something. So today we want to talk about what these priority mergers are, regular mergers, splitters, priority splitters, smart splitters, uh, probably used all the wrong names for those. But basically we want to look at this row right here. Regular mergers and regular splitters, you probably use those every day of the week. Uh, they're not a problem. If you run one conveyor in a splitter and put two ports on there, it splits at 50-50. If you put three out ports on it, it splits at one third each. It just takes input and splits at whatever number of conveyors that you put on it. Mergers are the same. If you have something, you know, one of three ports coming in or all three ports coming in, it just merges it into one line and goes on the way. But what are the priority merger, smart splitter, and programmable splitter all about? I'm going to start with the one that you probably use the most, you probably know the best, and that's the smart splitter. And the best way to illustrate this is, is with uh, where we have a, a, an inventory dump here. We actually have an inventory dump here that just sorts all everything out. So I can go into my inventory here and I can just look at all this and just dump it in there and away it goes. It'll get sorted out and then when it gets sorted out, it gets put into containers and I don't have to, to mess with it. And the way it gets taken care of is right downstairs. And so what it does is I have a, an array of smart splitters. And so I'm going to fly around here and kind of give you an idea of what we're doing here. Now, that array looks rather impressive. We go to this first smart splitter. When we look at it, its left one is a time crystal. It will overflow everything else out the center output. OK, so if it has time crystals here, and I think there's a few in here, it has sorted out several time crystals and it's available there. Now, one thing I have not done yet is I've not hooked up all of these to our mall, which is just above us here. And this is the bottom part of the mall in our Gigafactory. And every smart splitter is set to a different product. So here it's going to do singularity cells. Here we'll do copper ingots. Here is going to do um, some cable. Okay. And each of these um, industrial storage containers then have various items in there. Okay, some are empty because frankly, we just haven't dumped that particular item in there and other items have some modest amount of items in there. So it gets all the way through to the end. And if I haven't remembered every single product and tested every single product, it outputs after this final splitter here that's doing neural quantum processors, late another late game item. If it still hasn't found a smart splitter that's programmed for that, it just comes here, goes down, and we have a sink at the bottom to gladly accept any surplus that we haven't thought of yet. And frankly, if we haven't thought of it by now, it probably is not something we're going to worry too much about anyway. So that's basically what a smart splitter will do, is it'll take the burden of sorting your products out and getting them uh, put in separate containers or into your mall or wherever you need to, to have them put. So one last thing that I need to tell you about is um, why did I use overflow here? You know, there's also another thing called any undefined. Well, and there's also any. Well, if I say any, it's going to send time crystals and anything straight through and it might totally ignore that I told the left output to be time crystals. If I do any undefined though, I have defined the kind of time crystals are supposed to go on the left output. Any undefined means that anything else will go on down the line. Now, you notice I used overflow. And the reason I used overflow was because if I use any undefined and that container gets full of time crystals, it will continue to try to put time crystals down that left output and it'll stop at that point with a with a full container. So if I put it on overflow, it'll send time crystals down there until that container is full. And at that point, it'll send time crystals forward as well. So I use overflow. So that's kind of a primer on what those three selections are. Play with those a little bit, see what works uh, for your particular situation. OK, so let's move on to the next one. So I need to scoot 
down here a little bit. Go under the belt. And up there. Okay. And so over here, I've put together a demonstration of first the programmable splitter. Okay, so we've got a programmable splitter here. And when we look at the configuration, what I've done is I've, I, I want the right output to be all novelisks. There's various types of novelisks. So a smart splitter, splitter in this case will only let me specify a novelisk or a cluster novelisk or a nuke novelisk. It'll only let me check, select one of these. But with a programmable splitter, I can say, I want the whole category of novelisks to be over here. I want the whole category of ammo and the rifle to go with it to go here. I want all the category of rebar and the rebar gun to go over here. So what I've got here in the container is a selection of all of those items that I've programmed in the programmable splitter. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to let the programmable splitter sort it out for me. And of course, they're in here and I'm going to have it sorted to three separate containers. So let's let her fly here and see what happens. And as soon as that empties, and it'll empty pretty quick because of course it's a Mark VI conveyor. We see ammo coming. And what we're seeing is the programmable splitter doing its job. It's now filling the center one. All right, and now it looks like we're all empty. Let's go see what it did. Here we have rebar and the rebar gun, okay? The next one container we have the ammo and the regular rifle, different types of ammo and the regular rifle. And over here we have three types of novelists that were all sorted out nice and neatly. And we can label these and uh, pick them up, pick them up later. So that is the programmable splitter and what it does. Okay. I use, I use it generally for categories of items uh, as in this case. Okay. How do we deal now with a thing called the priority merger, okay? I'm gonna show this a really quick demo. And um, this container has, you know, quite a bit of product in it. But you notice it's it's all mixed up. You know, it's mixed up like you would see in a sushi belt or a, a belt that just had a bunch of mix of different things on it, okay? And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that the belts all filled up together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and connect this one up and let it go. And we'll see it work on filling these uh, various items up. Okay, so as the containers fill up, see we've got, you know, wire going into this one and we've got rocket fuel going into that one and plastic going into that one. Okay, so we've got belt one, belt two, belt three. Okay. So what we're going to do here is the priority merger says on the left output, I'm left input, I'm going to ha make that the high priority. The center input, I'm going to make medium priority and the right output, I'm going to make low priority. So what that does is it says I'm going to empty the left belt first. Then if there's nothing on the left belt, I'm going to empty the second belt if there's stuff on the second belt and the right input. And then after I get done with the center input, uh, center input and it's completely empty and the left input's completely empty, I'll get around to doing the right input, okay? So I found a lot of use for the priority merger, but you can obviously see that it's effective mostly in doing what you've asked it to do. So hopefully this has been a, a good tutorial here help help you understand a little bit better on the priority merger the smart splitter and the programmable splitter and that this has helped you and if if it has hit that like button let other people know about the video and uh, come and join us playing on our channel we have our community discord posted in the in the comments below if you become a member on youtube or a, a subscriber on twitch you can also come and play with us on our member servers and we would really like to have you do that so look forward to seeing you again thanks for coming bye bye